Good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here, and I wanted to make another video for you. In this video that I'm going to make for you, we're going to create a beta distribution in, in Excel. And so, basically, what we're going to do is when you create a beta distribution, you have alpha and the beta are shades. And A is the upper limit and B is the lower limit. So in this particular exercise, we're setting alpha and beta as 5. And we're going to set A as 0, which is lower limit, and B as 1, which is the low, upper limit. And then after we have set our alpha, beta, upper limit, and lower limit, what we have to do is we have to input the data into what is going to be the distribution and so for this exercise we're going to have the starting number the lower number is going to be zero and it's going to be all the way up to one and point zero one point increments so it will go all the way uh, up to row uh, C102 if you have it all the way in one degree increments. So that's how the data that we're going to have to have to actually get sorry about this, it's being awkward. That's the data that we're going to have to have to actually create the beta distribution. But what we want to do is we want to set the beta distribution and the probability distribution function. And so what we're going to do in cell D3 is we're going to input the following formula being equals, equals lets you know that you're going to be working with the formula. Uh, beta dot dist bracket C3 is the the lowest value, the first value, dollar sign B, dollar sign 2, that's your alpha, dollar sign B, dollar sign 3, that's your beta, and then false lets you know that it's a probability distribution function, dollar sign B, dollar sign 4 is your A, and dollar sign B, dollar sign 5 is your B. So the cells that have dollar signs in them means that they are absolute references. So they're not going to move from one cell to the next. And then so after you've entered that formula in cell D3, then you need to copy it all the way down to the end, which I think it's going to be cell D. 102 I think so that's what we're going to do and then this is the resulting right here beta PDF is the resulting graph that is plotted with this information and then so then you've got you want to have your beta CDF that's cumulative distribution function and so for the cumulative distribution function you're going to use exactly the same formula that you use for the probability distribution function, except you're going to put true in the formula instead of false. So true is your cumulative distribution function, which is CDF, and false is probability distrib distribution function. And then so you put that uh, formula in cell F3, and you copy it all the way down to, I believe it's F102. And this is the, um, this is the um, graph that is plotted with a beta CDF. So you can see that the graph that's plotted with the beta PDF is different from the beta CDF. So it's good to see the difference between the PDF and the BDF. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can plot a graph 
with your beta distribution. So the first thing you want to do is you want to mark off all the cells that you want to form a graph with. So we've marked off all the cells. And then um, you go over here to your ribbon and you say insert, and you say recommended. So in recommended, we already have the scatter plot. And this is another scatter plot that you could use. You could use one or the other. But if you want to go into our, all charts, you can see what's in all charts. So you can say you've got a line chart, and then you've got a, which is very similar to the scatter plot. Got a pie chart, which we're not going to use, bar chart, which we're not going to use, scatter PDF, which is what we have used, but I just want to see what it looks like over here. So, so that's interesting. It lets you know, you know, the different charts that you can plot. You can look at surface. So the surface looks good. Radar, tree map, sunburst, histogram, box and whisker, waterfall. So the waterfall looks good, but it doesn't look um like the chart that we want to see funnel and the combo so that's very interesting but the only thing the best one is xy scatter plot and uh, the one that i like is the xy scatter plot and you can see that but i don't really see anything that particularly appeals to me so we're just going to leave it but like let's say hypothetically you found a chart that you like you would click onto it and then you would click ok and then what would happen is it would be on your um screen it would be on your spreadsheet so we're going to look at the beta cdf And we're going to highlight the cells that we want to form a graft on. And let's see if we can find anything we like. And so we're going to look over here for recommended charts. You see that we've got a scatter plot is your recommended chart. We can look over here at all charts. The column chart looks okay. Um, bar chart, and then we've got the XY scatter plot. So you've got your map, stock, surface, that looks interesting, radar, tree map, sunburst, histogram, box and whisker, waterfall, funnel, and combo. So the one that I like the best is the one that we've already selected. So let's say if it wasn't already on the spreadsheet, then you would find the one that you like. You click onto that, and then you click onto OK, and that would actually come on your spreadsheet and you would have the chart which we've already got on our chart so that pretty much concludes this particular video because i showed you how to plot a beta distribution and probability distribution and cumulative distribution function and i've showed you how to plot a graph so one thing that you could do if you want to experiment you can say five alpha spy beta is two. You can experiment with that, and you can see if you experiment that with that, you can see how the shape the shape 
changes. And then we'll just look at 12 and then 12 and see what happens. And you can see how the shape changes when you, when you, um, when you modify the alpha and the beta and the upper and the lower. And I'm not going to change the input values, but if you wanted to experiment with changing the input values, you always could do that as well. So I think that pretty much concludes this video since I've showed you whatever I need to show you on creating a beta distribution. So maybe you can make your own beta distribution and experiment with it and see how you like it. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe. I look forward to communicating with you in the next video where we're going to be using some more statistical distributions.